and they're throwing him out of his life. Everybody, they will not allow him to be happy. He's he's not allowed. If they get him kicked out of every place he goes to, he goes to a restaurant and shows up, and they find out he's there. They start bombarding that restaurant nonstop until the restaurant asks him to leave. A lot of these people I know and their friends are when they call me and I'm I'm so sorry, but we just can't. But they, they they want they try to get him they get him fired from every job he gets. They get him kicked out of every establishment he likes to go to. It's insane. Welcome everybody to the Cope and Seethe show with Clint and our homie Cobra. If you remember several months ago, there was a documentary done by your favorite son who went and visited uh, Cobra in Wyoming and documented a bunch of different things, did some interviews with some people, X, Y, and Z. One of the biggest complaints I feel like was voiced during this time frame was the fact that Clint was never interviewed. And immediately after the documentary was released, Cobra like got super pissed off <laughs> and had a live stream basically talking about how the documentarium wasn't fair to him and he was, you know, sneak dissing him and it wasn't cool. But for some reason, several months later, Josh deems this guy good enough to finally fulfill an interview with his dad because his dad has been very apprehensive about interviewing with anybody because he doesn't trust the trolls. The trolls are evil and demonic and they don't understand. And part of the thing is we're going to, I had to take a step back a little bit because when I first watched through the interview, I really just wanted to blanket term call Clint a terrible father who is not advocating for the best of his son. And while I think there are still truths within that statement, I'm gonna walk some of it back throughout the video and we'll get to why. I know everybody wants to be outraged, everybody wants to say, oh, he's so horrible, everything's so horrible, how can you possibly take the side of Clint or Cobra at any time? And I think it's, it's within reason, <laughs> all right? Just trust me. We can, we can argue a little bit later, but I just want to get that out front and I'm going to juxtapose that <laughs> immediately with the fact that Josh getting kicked out of establishments is happening because he is doxing those establishments and it's the internet. Whether or not you think these people are doing it to be spiteful or evil or whatever is your own prerogative. But it's the fact of the matter, that's how the internet rolls. Sorry. Sorry. If you're a clown on the internet and you give away, you know, hyper-specific detail about you or where you are and what you're doing, expect retaliation. That's that's all I can say. Um, and plus, I just don't trust anybody in the code reverse. Um, years ago, I would let people in and... And they would just burn me, you know, I'd, I'd let them in and I'd, I'd talk to them and I'd, I'd reveal stuff I shouldn't have because I thought they were legit. And, you know, I, I get 40 emails a day. I'm not a troll. <laughs> Whatever, man. And, you know, they all say it. And, uh, and they all just fuck us over always. It's I'm a hundred percent record. Now I'm, I'm a bad track record for reading people. Apparently I just, Oh my God, I don't have time to read that shit. Um, and cause I was just inundated with it. And plus I don't care. Um, it's, it's pretty bizarre to understand that the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree with a lot of the mannerisms a lot of how clint explains things away it really starts to shine a light on ah yes i see where cobra gets it from i i certainly understand that you know just basically shirking any responsibility attached to basically anything ever it's just whoopsie do whoops whoops a poodle you know that's that's not my problem i'm not even concerned about it guys i don't even care that much you know i read it i respond to a lot of them but i don't even care oh my god what makes you think i care you pathetic trolls and you got you got josh sitting over there on the side cross-armed really pissed off i don't know why i mean this is his like turtle shell <laughs> <laughs> stance you know if, if, if you're in like some sort of video game and you got like a tank or a shield character that's what that's the position that josh is in right now he is clearly defensive he doesn't like where this is going to go yet for some reason he agreed to allow this interview to happen 
It all just is kind of perplexing to me. I'm, I'm wondering if there's some backroom shady dealings going on. One of the things with Josh, um, when Josh was not even two years old, we knew there was definitely something, you know, uh, different about him. Um, and so it, we, you know, started having him checked. Um, by the time he was four, five years old, I I realized I I didn't have the parenting skills to help him. I mean, he was take everything you think you know about parenting and you just throw it right out the window. <laughs> Um, at the time, I, I was a volunteer coach for Special Olympics, so I was very used to working with, um, you know, development, developmentally challenged uh, kids, you know, both physically and mentally, and I also coached for a long time. So, I, I mean, I really had a lot of skills in terms of working with kids, but nothing worked with Josh. Every time, every single parenting trick I tried, just nothing. I mean, nothing. And and I realized that I need some. So I actually went back to school and got a degree in psychology and started working with adjudicated youth. Um, and I, 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 went, I was pursuing the degree to help myself so that I could help him because um, I, I needed a better understanding of, of, you know, what I was dealing with and how to help him. Because he had, by the time he was six, he'd been just, he'd been labeled probably six different disorders. And six. <laughs> yeah, I know. Six, six, <laughs> yeah. I think my biggest issue with Clint is that he takes too much of a buddy approach when it comes to dealing with Josh. And initially when I saw this clip and I was going to talk about it, I basically just wanted to call him out as being like a pseudo intellectual, you know, somebody who's taking blanketed instruction and, and education and trying to apply it to all instances that occur in the real world. And I think that is kind of true with basically anything that you're going to study, regardless. But watching it back a couple times, this is where I might deviate a little bit from the trolls that are out there. Because it's, it's hard for me to be hypercritical of a situation that I don't partake in ever. You know, I, I interact with with people similar to Josh, maybe on a 24 hour basis, not on a lifetime basis, if you, if that makes any sense. So it's like, I know how to deal with people similar to Josh when it's like a one-off, you, you come into contact with them, they're in your class, they're in a, whatever, a restaurant you're in, you, you have a family member, a friend, whatever. So like, I, I get that and it, it, it gives me some sympathy towards Clint and it also shows him going to try and get this degree to help with Josh shows that he's willing to learn and he's capable of loving his son and I think that is a very strong foundation to formulate an attack plan of moving forward with life now I'm going to be critical about what he has and hasn't done but I think it's hard for me to jump on the train and just say, oh, he's a blanket enabler. He's just a piece of shit who doesn't know what he's doing. And it's like, dude, 99% of the people who are watching this video, who are watching other videos that deal with Clint, don't have to deal with the situation. I'm not saying that that means that he can wash his hands clean of any mistakes, but it's also, he's at least showing courage and and a can-do attitude to trying to wrap his head around what's going on. Uh, he's like, all right, I'm 18. You know, we're out having dinner. And so, so what's it like to be an adult? He goes, that's right, I'm an adult. That means I don't have to do what you tell me anymore. I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, I'm an adult. So I don't have to do anything you tell me. And I'm like, well, yeah, technically, you know, you're living in my house and you're going to follow my rules. Um, when you move out, you can do whatever you want. But when you're living in my house, you're going to live by our rules. And he goes, no you, don't, no, you can't make me. I'm an adult. And in Josh's mind, as you know, it's kind of very black and white and there, there isn't a lot of gray and boom, he quit everything. So in his mind, especially at that age, he took everything that we had ever made him do that he didn't like and refused to do it. He refused to take a shower, refused to brush his teeth, refused to clean his room. He started smoking. He didn't smoke before that. He's like, I'm going to start smoking. So why would you do that? Well, because I'm 18, you can't stop me. Yeah, but, but why would you start that? Because I can. And in his mind, 
I'm an asshole who's always lecturing him and trying to change who he is. And I think this is kind of a normal teen dynamic with their parents too, especially same sex parent. You know, my dad wants me to be like him and I'm not, so I'm not good enough for him, you know, type of an, a mentality. And then I think it's very normal, but he, uh, you know, with Josh, everything's always to the extreme. It's always to the extreme. And so then every time I was with him, I'm of course parenting and he's of course saying enough, man, you know? And here's where I'll get critical of how Clint approached Josh. Because while that concept of, oh, he's a teen, he'll grow out of it, it's just a phase, it's whatever, is true for the majority of people, with Josh's ailments, per se, he gets hyper fixated on things, and that's why he's obsessed with Ozzy Osbourne and being goth and clock towers. You know, that's that explains that. But... Because he has this, this mental inefficiency, doesn't mean that he is incapable of change. It doesn't mean that, you know, and Clint will reiterate this throughout the entire interview, where it's like, well, he's been the same since he was two years old. Since he was two years old, he's never changed. And it's like, that's cap. That's not true. He has definitely changed since then. And it's evident because later on he's going to say, Oh yeah, he hasn't really brushed his teeth consistently in 12 years, but at least he's starting to think about going to a dentist. And it's like, all right, 12 years ago, he'd be like, what, 20? You know, late teens, something like that. And so he clearly was brushing his teeth prior to that. <laughs> so this is a new developed laziness of him, you know? And it, maybe you have to parent him a little bit differently, maybe scolding him or spanking him or grounding him doesn't necessarily work as well and you know makes them shut down whatever but you are still the parent and you're still the adult in this situation basic hygiene is something that should be non-negotiable non-negotiable you can say well you know he really likes snakes he really likes being goth i can't really force that out of him and i'd be like you know what that's 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 reasonable sorry you know you can't dictate every little aspect of of your child's life but if you want them to be successful, <laughs> one of the basics should probably be, uh, I don't know, taking a shower every day. I don't know, brushing your teeth. I don't know, cleaning up after yourself. Those would be some basic things. And, and for some reason, Clint is under this idea of, well, Josh said he turned 18 and he's adult. And I'm just, what can I do? What can I do? Oh my God, this is, this is insane. What can I do? Well, you're still the adult, you still have the funds, you still have support interests that you could go to, whether it's counseling or go to a rehab facility that can help train both of you as to how to deal with this. You know, there's, there's options out there. You're not completely hamstrung. It's not like Josh is 2,000 miles away in a different state just doing whatever he wants to do. It's like, no, you still living under your house until he was in his early 20s, mid 20s. It's like... Uh, there's a disconnect here, Clint, all right? You gotta own up to your own issues, and then we can start to meet in the middle ground about some things that we can be a little bit more lax about. And, and I finally realized, and this was, this was hard at first, it's, it's gotten easier, but I finally realized, you know, if I'm going to be in his life, I'm going to have to do a couple different things. One, I've got I've to stop trying to change him. Not, you know, because obviously as a dad, I don't want my kid, I want my kid brushing his teeth. I want my kid taking a shower. I want my kid keeping his room clean. You know, I, I, I want my kid having a job and I want my kid um, taking care of himself physically and mentally. Of course, I want all that. But in his eyes, every time I even remind him, I'm I'm lecturing. I'm trying to change him. There you go. About what, 24, 25? I'm like, all right. All right, dad. You know, you got to quit being a dad 24 hours, seven. And just accept the fact that, and, and then for me, then it wasn't just that too. Then it's like, I've, I have to choose to be proud of who he is. And this reminds me, if you ever seen the movie Whiplash, if you haven't, go watch it now. It's an excellent movie. It's fantastic. And there's a scene where J.K. Simmons' character and Miles Teller's character are talking to each other. And J.K. Simmons says, there's no two words worse in the English language than good job. And I think it also applies to I'm proud of you to some extent, to some extent. I think you should be proud of your own children 
almost regardless. You know, it's it, there's there's plenty of things that Josh does that you should not be proud of and you shouldn't blanket it. And it's also like I don't he's he's like navigating this weird minefield of between being a dad and being a friend. I feel like he be he becomes way too much like a friend. And he's just like Oh yeah, you know, this is Josh, this is how he's going to be, and I just have to support him. I just have to be there for him. And it's like, that's not how parenting works. And, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm entering unknown territory with this upcoming comment, but I do think that being an only child in a single father household was detrimental to how this whole situation worked out. And I think that... Clint was so afraid that he was going to lose Josh forever that he refused to be harsh on him. He refused to force things on him. And part of it is kind of scary because it's like, if it's you or me and we're doing heroin and your parents are like, all right, if you're going to do heroin, that's your choice. But you can't be around our family. You can't show up to these things. You know, they set boundaries. And if you choose to try and reform yourself, come on back. We'll, we'll welcome you with open arms. But until then, go away. And that's what I wish could happen with Josh. And we'll get to it a little bit later that Clint absolutely fumbles the choice that he had to have made that he chose not to because he's an imbecile and it has derailed Josh's future. And Clint just refuses to own that sorry sorry i just won't do it sorry it's just these two are two peas in the pod and it's hard for me to feel sympathy and also not just like want to tear my hair out you're happy together and the thing that people don't realize and and i don't they don't need to realize it's none of their damn business I run a couple of businesses. I'm also a full-time teacher. So I'm in very busy period. I tried to get him to do a food channel for years. Ever since he was little, the food concoctions and the drink concoctions. Oh my God. And I'm like, dude, the, the shit you put together and put in your mouth <laughs> is just horrifying. And people would pay to watch that, man. And I'm forever. I tried to get him to do that. When he first started his channel, I'm like, you know what you need to do with your channel? You need to do your concoctions, man. Oh, I'm cool, dude. I'm good, Dad. I don't need that, Dad. I well, do my concoctions on my channel, though. You do now. <laughs> I'm on my channel. I've been trying to get you to since you were 18. Here come the excuses from Clint, and he'll reiterate this. He'll say, you know, I, I, I do think that your favorite son is being a little bit too tame, a little bit too passive with the interview. At the same time, this is your really only shot in order to getting some insight from Clint. So I sort of understand the approach of not being too confrontational, not pushing issues too much, not trying to aha you, oh, I got you type of thing. You know, it's like, but, but at the same time, I feel like you have to push back because if you're gonna start saying, well, you know, I run several businesses, I'm really busy this time of year, I just can't get it all put together. All right, well, if you want to take the back seat on something, you know, if you want to take the back seat on Josh's alcoholism, his teeth, his hygiene, his duster addiction, his food combos, whatever you want to take the back seat on. All right, you do that. But then somebody else has to pick up the load. Is that going to be Josh? Well, you say it can't be Josh. Josh can't be at fault because he has a mental disorder. Oh, that's weird. So wait, it's just whoopsie doodle. That's just, that's just how life shook out. No, that's not how things work, dude. So it's like, if you care so much about your son, you're gonna find ways to navigate your busy schedule to make sure that he's on the right track. Not, sorry son, it's the three month busy season of, of my companies. I'm just gonna say, all right, go for it. And it sort of makes sense because he says October, November, December. Those are his three busy months and they, fluctuate in and out in terms of stretching further into September or into January or whatever. And it makes sense because those three months are the most tumultuous time points of Josh always. He's always getting hyper drunk. He's always going on crazy rants during this time of year. And Clint chalks it up as, well, he has, he has holiday seasonal affective disorder. 
Uh, yeah, sure, buddy. Uh, sure. Maybe it's because his father is absent during this time frame. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here, Clint. I'm not a dad like you, so maybe I just don't know anything. I'm just a stupid idiot. But, I don't know. Maybe, maybe be there more. You know, maybe, maybe drop some of your side activities that you're trying to pick up. You know, maybe, maybe sell a portion of your business so you can be there for your mentally disabled son. I don't know. Pick a side. Stop being a fence rider. And he let me teach him how to use that lathe. And he let me show him how to make wants. And he actually listened instead of fighting me. It was magic for me. I, I teared up. I was just, I can't believe this is happening. Oh my God. The idea that I can't grow as a person. <laughs> You know how 20 retards stuck in his ways. 20 some years. He would never let me teach him anything or show him anything. And he finally let me show him and he was, and we made and oh, I was so relaxed and we had so much fun. Well, um, it's it's really therapeutic for me, like when I play guitar and stuff. Yeah. We're working on getting some resin molds and stuff now, uh to build our own stuff so we can start uh we're gonna try turning some resin to see how that works. And this is the one part in the entire interview that I'm like, bravo bravo because i've interacted with people that have tried to interact with their non-responsive disabled child so many times trying to figure out something that they're really into and an instance i can think of was they finally connected over thomas the tank engine and that was what they both loved so much and what they got so much joy out of and in turn they started to build like a train track system whatever you want to call it and that's how they bonded with each other and i think that's really cool i think that's really wholesome i'm not going to try and tear them down the the only point i would say is clint brings up a little bit later he's like oh yeah you know imagine if all eighty thousand people bought your wands john should be a millionaire and that's not how basic economics that's not how product distribution works that's not how advertising works it's not how any of that works but i get the idea right and and i i am curious of the people who buy cobra's wands i've even mentioned it i'm like you know if i could get my hands on one at some point that'd probably be cool but it's not because i think it's looks good or is crafted well it's because it's tied to cobra that's the only reason why and i guess you can advertise and make money based off of that you know, I'm just spit. I'm just you know shooting from the hip here. A lot about you know Josh growing, and and becoming more self reflective. But I think it's also respectable that you, you know, you have felt that same growth and learned to you know both better your relationship. It's it's this is pretty inspiring. I'm not, I'm going to be honest. Well, it's it's just parenting, you know. Yeah, and the people on the outside, you know, they don't. It's, it's easy to, and, and one thing, when, when you have a challenge, when you have a, uh, when you raise a child with challenges, you're, you're judged every second of every day. You know, when I was coaching Special Olympics, that was one thing I noticed all the parents had in common uh, was the, the way people look at them, the way they treat them, because your kid's weird, your kid's different. So what did you do wrong? Um, you must be a bad parent because your kid's acting weird. And so it's very easy to blame parents, you know, and to this day, and I'm guilty of it. You know, if I'm in a store and I see a kid throwing a fit, I think somebody needs to swat that kid's ass. I don't think that's the problem with today's youth. You're not allowed to spank them. <laughs> see, I can't tell if it's a joke or not coming from Josh, but that's 100% true. If Josh was spanked more as a kid, he would turn out much better. <laughs> I, I, You know, you can disagree with me if you want, but I believe that physical punishment at times, not, not 100% of punishment should be physical. But there should be some aspect, especially when you're really out of line. And it's also, Clint, the difference is Josh is a mostly functional member of society. That's how I would figure I would put him. He's not, you know, he doesn't fit in like me or you or my, ne my next door neighbor, you know. But he could go grocery shopping for himself. He could probably get a license and learn how to drive a car if he wanted to. He could hold down a job if he was really committed to, but there's a there's a shortfall in there. You can chalk it up as the trolls are preventing him from being able to do any of this stuff, but we all remember what he was like when he had his job at Wendy's. He was more coherent, he was able to form relationships with people, and he was able to keep a consistent schedule. And all those things are gone 
because he's become an alcoholic, he's become addicted to Duster, he's become addicted to the internet, he's become addicted to his own ego and his own personality. Clint is trying to frame him as somebody who's a hapless victim, who hates himself so much, that's why he live streams himself non-stop and stares himself into a camera for several hours every single day odd doesn't make a lot of sense to me clint but hey you do you you know you're just trying to keep your friendship with your son alive while he slowly deteriorates in front of you and you just say well i guess it is what it is yeah this is and this is where i get so frustrated because they 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 don't look at him as a human being they look at him as their, their toy and i mean the the, the i even some teasing, and, and you mentioned this in your documentary as well, you know, some of the good nature teasing. And this was hard for Josh because I'm a teaser. And um, and he has Asperger's. And Asperger's take everything very literal. I convinced him he was an alien once. And, <laughs> and, and used my Photoshop skills to literally make it real. <laughs> he's always been harassed because he's different, you know. Um, Rejected by every chick. Oh, my God. Every day is his life. From the time he was in grade school, I've had to, and you know, I have no idea how hard this is as a parent to watch your kid go through this every single day. And I understand Clint's defensiveness when it comes to Josh and the internet because nobody wants to see their son or daughter or friend or cousin be, you know, picked on consistently where there's a winner essentially and a loser in the outcome. If it was just how he was explaining what he was doing to, uh, to Josh when he was younger, where it was just like hapless fun all the time, you know, we're just laughing, but it, it becomes estranged when the interaction is, I'm going to send Josh cat food and Josh thinks owning the troll is by eating the cat food. And it's quite evident that Josh doesn't comprehend what humor is and what is supposed to be just some ironic tinge, you know, a little, little stabbing in the side of his gut. He just like can't comprehend that so i get it but it, it can't just be it's always on the trolls the trolls are always at the at the crux of it that just can't be the solution to everything we're so worried about the decline josh is drinking decline gee i wonder why the fuck he drinks because i enjoy it i do i enjoy it it makes me feel good mm -hmm. temporarily but we won't have that conversation but it's crossed a lot of lines to be honest. I don't get it, man. I just how miserable does your life have to be that the only fulfillment you get out of it is spending five, six hours a day harassing an autistic man? They're too they're too sensitive, they're too fragile. So, and this is one of the things that I have the highest level of respect for Josh. That I mean, he has substance abuse issues, and we talk about it a lot, and he knows how I feel about it. And I'm not gonna get into that on camera. For his sake, but fuck. <laughs> but I think if that's all he's got right now, based on the abuse he's taken, <laughs> and and it isn't just a little man. If 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 these trolls were his parents in his life, he'd have been removed from the home a long time ago. So, anywho, um, I went to a stereo store in several days. I'm quite proud of myself. Days, several weeks actually. Thank you. Cobra lying <laughs> immediately right at the end. Oh, I haven't I haven't done dust during like I don't know two or three hours. Two or three hours. Oh, I mean two or three millennia. It's it's never even occurred. It's not even invented at this point. It's just a figment of our own imagination. That's the duster I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ash I was assembled by by the Greek gods. That's why I'm referring to. And it it's funny because Clint thinks that Josh is completely incapable of having any self-control i guess you know everybody wants to slam dunk on the guy who sends josh duster in the mail knowing what the outcome was probably going to be yet clint claims that he is currently intercepting these packages of air duster and if you haven't seen there's a neighbor who did a video on reddit where he went to Josh's door, and guess what was sitting right there, right there for Josh to pick up? Oopsie doodle, some some duster, you know, no big deal. And I'm not saying he has to be there 24 seven, but I kind of am saying that, because if it's all the trolls fault, everything that 
Josh is addicted to and has issues with, it's all the trolls fault, then you're some like delusional head case that should be locked in some asylum with Josh. It's just like, I, I, I can't, I can't grasp it. I really can't. And I understand if this was the approach and Josh was 16 years old on the internet doing these videos and he was becoming addicted to these things. Josh is in his 30s, dude. It's, he's not, you can't treat him like some little kid anymore. And if the outcome is Josh hates your guts and never wants to interact with you again, then you can keep trying. You can keep trying to make his life better. Because at the end of the day, when Josh dies because of some sort of seizure he has with all the mixture of everything he does or cirrhosis or whatever awful thing is going to occur to him, at least you can say, man, I fought. I fought so hard to try and save him. And I just couldn't. And then at that point, you could probably chalk it up and say, you know, yes, these other symptoms are what caused him to ultimately die. But it was his interaction with the internet and it was his own mental deficiency that led him down this path. And you can say, I fought like hell to try and save him. And that's what Clint already thinks he's doing, but he's just enabling him. And, and that's just the truth. I sincerely feel bad for him. I, I would, nothing I knew about it. I did finally track down one of the, uh, one of the really nasty trolls who trolls me all the time. I finally tracked him down a couple days ago and uh, seriously thought about sharing his phone number and his address and his name and his family's phone numbers and addresses and names. He's in Massachusetts. And I thought about sharing it all with everybody so that he could, all the true fans of Josh could just bombard the shit out of him and his family and see how long they last. Um, but obviously, like I said, he's hurting enough, you know? And this is, this is the insane asylum that we're reaching into. I don't know who this troll is that he was interacting with. I don't know what the troll did to him. I don't know what he was saying, but if your immediate reaction is, man, I really want to dox this guy. I want to dox this guy so bad. Me, uh, by the way, this guy, in case he's watching, you're in Massachusetts. I know where you are. I found out where you live, but I'm not going to dox you. I'm not going to do that. That's the type of shit that like DSP and Wings do, dude. Like, it's, it's, it's weird. And like, the whole doxing thing is bizarre to me that Clint can't grasp this. Your own son is doxing himself, dude. He's doing it to himself. Hey guys, I'm at Frosty's Bar in Casper, Wyoming. Hmm, I wonder where that is. How many Frosty's Bars do you think are in Casper, Wyoming? Hey guys, here's here's me getting wasted and holding up, you know, all of my receipts <laughs> in the mail up to the camera. Wow, how'd they figure out my address? That's crazy. It's just mental loony bin and this is where i start to fall off the tracks of well he's a loving father trying to find his own way in the world and this guy is just an enabling piece of shit who has no grasp on reality has no grasp on internet culture and how people interact on an online sphere it's just bizarre night and day but the, the good people i don't know you know i don't know what they do to help them um the thing is, and Josh isn't going to like this, but Josh has got to help himself. Um, any type of change, if anybody has ever quit smoking, um, quit any habit, it's hard. And it takes a whole lot of willpower and it takes a whole lot of desire and work to change in any capacity. Um, because personal change is hard. We are creatures of habit. And that's where a lot of these trolls are. This is their daily habit. They get up in the morning and troll Josh. <laughs> got my laugh for the minute or whatever it is, but it's a habit. And if Josh is going to change, he's got to want to change. Want to have it. I don't want to stop drinking alcohol, but I do want to cut down on it. And I've been making a solid effort on that. Yes, you have. And this is the worst part of the entire interview. I know we took 30 plus minutes to get to this point. This is the worst part. Because not even, not even two weeks ago, bro, he was ranting and raving and going insane inside of his apartment at five o'clock on a weekday, just screaming and going insane and, and falling over and passing out. 
and having the cops called on him and yelling at neighbors. All this was happening, but no, no, don't worry guys, he's changed. He's making efforts to stop his drinking. Remember when he said that last year, Clint? Remember that when he was threatening you inside of your car? When, when you got him arrested? Do you remember that? Or do you have amnesia and you just want to ignore that? And it's just, oh, well, that was just a rough moment for Josh. And all the subsequent moments that have occurred after that of him drinking and screaming and getting high, all those things, yeah, those are just freak troll incidents. I can't do anything to stop them. That's just insane. It's like, my sympathy is gone. <laughs> It's gone. You know, I tried I tried to take an approach early on in this video where I'm like, he's fighting for him. He, he wants to do right by him and he just doesn't know how. To, he is actively enabling him and actively disregarding the evidence we have of Josh being a degenerate. <laughs> Jesus. Even things like wands. If, if every wand he'd ever snapped was sold, <laughs> Because he'll make this awesome freaking wand and you're like, oh my God, that is cool as shit. No, it's not. Fuck this. It snaps it in half and throws it away. Um, And he does that with, that's a great, then the wands are a metaphor to real things in his life as well. Um, Big Ben, you know, Big Ben, he's and people at Asperger's, as you probably know, so Josh, he focuses on things, the color black, the color green. Uh, snakes, cobras, Big Ben, bell towers. Clock towers, yeah. Um, these are things bell, that have done. Towers. These are things that he's been this way. He has, this has been this way since he was two, three years old. I'm at nine. At nine, ten, I'm knocking on his door. He won't let me in his apartment when I'm like this because he knows he's going to get a lecture. So he won't. I'm getting out of the shower at the tower after I'm away. He won't um, open the door. And I'm like, dude, we got to go. Stop rushing me. And, and the more I rush him, the slower he goes. And literally, 11 is when he'll finally come out and we leave. God for his landlord. Oh man, what a great guy! Oh, uh, my awesome. He he's is actually, awesome. He's actually a fan of my videos, and he watches Josh's videos. He tells me all the time, Clint, don't worry. There ain't a thing they're gonna fucking say that's gonna make me. We know, we know the situation. We know who they are. We know what goes on. I watch his videos. He's good. Yeah, don't you guys wish you lived in an apartment building where your landlord just let a raving lunatic mental asylum patient just go insane on a consistent weekly basis, and you just say. Oh, sorry, guys. You can't be mad. He has a mental problem. And it's like, dude, this guy is clinically insane. I don't like having cops show up and having door dashers show up 24-7 at this apartment. Like, kick him out for the love of God. And I feel like if Clint had any empathy or sympathy for anybody in real life, per se, then he would move Josh out of that environment for the sake of his neighbors, for the love of God. It's like... Neither one of these two are, are capable of finding any amount of blame to take. It's just, it's everybody else's fault, you know? And and I think his, his lack of punctuality really hammers that home because, yes, you get fixated on things. Yes, you do whatever. And maybe it would be completely different if... Clint says, I'm going to show up at 9 o'clock, and we have to leave at 9 o'clock. And he shows up at 9 o'clock, and Josh is recording a song, and he hasn't gotten ready yet. And Clint shows up and says, Josh, we have to leave right now. What's going on? And, and or Clint says that they have to leave right now. And Josh says, oh, man, I really messed that up. Let me go get changed real quick, and we'll leave. Or take a shower real quick, and we leave. The fact that it takes him multiple, multiple, multiple hours to fulfill a basic requirement means he doesn't give a shit about anybody. He only cares about himself. He doesn't care how his actions impact other people. You like to say that trolls don't care about how their actions impact Josh. Josh doesn't care how his actions impact anybody around him, anybody online, anybody in person. And to act like that's any different is bizarre and ridiculous on your part, Clint. And that's been he's been going to counseling uh we haven't gone for like a month now uh because i this is i'm in my busy season right now um and i'm just, i'm just normal ride for stuff so um where i'm in busy season i haven't been able to uh i'm i'm, I'm just can't until the end of the end, the end of this month is when i get back to a normal schedule what level do you think you're actually responsible for josh as a human being 
Uh, well, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> legally, none. He's an adult. He's lived on his own for 12 years. You know what I mean? Um, what am I supposed to do? Ground him? Uh, take away his phone? What's spank this him? About, what's this about legally? Um, so in terms of what I am able to do, nothing. <laughs> you know, there's this huge movement to Clinton needs to put him in a home. I don't have that capability. I don't have the right. I can't, he's not a child. I can't just say, well, go put him in a home. And I have friends who still work in the, I, I told you I worked in the field for 10 years and I have friends who still work in the field. And I talk to them about that stuff. And I say, and nothing you do, man. And it's literally nothing you can do. Um, and not only that, but I wouldn't want to put him in a home because I know it would kill him. Yeah. So that's another really tough question. Um, selfishly. Yeah. I wish he never would have started because of what I see him go through every day. But the, the good parts of it, this is what he does. It's his thing. It gives him joy. Um, he has some very, very toxic daily habits and relationships because of it that, that are very frustrating, but it's still, it's what gives him joy. It's what makes him happy. It's what he does. It's his thing. And he loves doing it. And Josh has always been seriously funny. He's just always been funny. You know, there's, there's like jokes, there's jokes, and there's dad jokes, and then and there's, there's Josh, Josh jokes. jokes. <laughs> yeah. Once again, Clint just reiterating. Ah, uh, yeah, he was going to counseling, but uh, I we had to we had to ask that. I was busy. You know, my son who's going clinically insane. Yeah, I, we can't we can't do anything about that. We just gotta move on. We just gotta move on. What do you want me to do? I'm not his legal guardian, bunny. All right, I'm not his legal guardian. All right, I can't do anything. All of Josh's actions, they're not his own fault and they're not my fault. Ooh, what are you gonna do about it, troll? You're gonna get upset because Josh is doing the irreheb, you know, irreheb, Jesus Christ, figure out your words, idiot. He's doing damage to himself without even understanding what he's actually doing. And the fact that Clint can sit there and actually say, yeah, I know this is harming him by being on YouTube, but it's something that he likes, so I'm going to allow him to keep doing it, is just speechless. I, I have nothing I could possibly add to that. That you are Josh's guardian, that you have like some sort of legal control over him or something. It, no. That's, that's so not the case. When it's common, um, when... And this came up to us. Uh, this is, in my opinion, <laughs> a mistake and also not a mistake that I made with Josh. Um, when they're minors and they're about to become adults, um, typically, if you've got um, um, a minor with disabilities of any kind, uh, you go through a paperwork process where you become their guardian and have custody of them even as an adult. In her defense, she wasn't mentally okay, I don't think, you know. Um, Gee, I wonder where I get it from. She wasn't a horrible person, um, but after we divorced, she just kind of disappeared one day. Two, one is kindness. He is seriously just an incredibly compassionate person, uh, especially with animals and, and 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 older people. He's just so genuine with them, and he's so caring about them, and he's just so good with them. Oh, yeah, I love my senior citizens. And, and he always has. Um, I get along better with senior citizens than I do with most people my own age. Yeah, without a doubt. And 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 is the fact that <laughs> shit that he goes through on a daily basis and he just is unapologetically himself all the time. So there's a lot to break down here. First off, Clint, this is the point I was talking about earlier. He completely destroyed Josh's life by not being a man and owning the fact that he had to be his guardian for the rest of his life. Sorry, Josh, you're going to hate me forever, but I know this is the right action for you. I know this is what we have to do. You can hate me. You can curse me. You can, you know, verbally assault me all you want, but I know that this is going to make your life better. But now he's just like, well, we, we talked about it and it's like, well, he already doesn't listen to me. So might as well just let him go flourish in the world. And it's like imbecile.
complete imbecile, complete lack of understanding of anything. You got that degree for what? To be a complete moron? Cool. Good use of money there, Clint. You know, instead of taking that money and putting him inside some home that at least they could care for his actual needs, he didn't, whatever, you know, you just push by that. And he, he loves animals so much that he's willing to just go take his bearded dragon outside on his shoulder and just let him go die somewhere. That's cool. He loves animals, dude. He's so great with them. I did want to include a short addendum here. Clint emailed me after the interview to clarify some things that he didn't get out. So this is directly from those emails. Oh, by the way, this didn't come up in the interview, but I know it's something people love to attack him about. Josh isn't on SSI. He hasn't been for many years. When he was on SSI, they did a full psych eval and deemed that he was permanently mentally disabled. He receives a small disability check from the government each month and it varies with his income. I do his taxes and all of his income is reported. One of my goals is to get him making enough money with his wands and YouTube so that the check gets smaller and smaller until it goes away. And another interesting fact that people don't get is his income. One of the reasons many people hate on him is because they think he makes a lot of money because he has a lot of followers. That's just not the case. With all of his ventures and the small disability checks, he makes less money a year than he did when working for Wendy's full time. And because his income is all from self-employment, he has to pay into taxes at the end of every year too, instead of getting a refund. I never thought that Cobra made a lot of money from YouTube. I'll be 100% honest. I always thought his entire income was supplanted by SSI. Now he can claim he doesn't make it. I don't know how much he's making on disability checks. He's calling it a minor amount. It's such a small amount. Well, how is he paying for his rent? Is that coming from you or is that coming from this disability check? If it's coming from the disability check, then it negates my whole assumption about everything because I just assumed SSI was paying for that already. So if it's just a different name, then it doesn't change anything, right? And you're still supporting him regardless in some way, whether it be emotional or not. But I never thought that he was making buku dollars on YouTube because I know he was demonetized for a long time. And I knew that he wasn't making cashola. He wasn't making only use me blade money on streams. So it's not surprising to me. That's just what I want to say. I, this video has gone on way too long. I didn't think I was going to talk for almost 50 minutes about this, but I just had to get some of it off my chest. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.